A production plant contains air compressors, air treatment equipment to dry and purify the compressed air, the pipework system to distribute the air to the point of use, plus machines and equipment that use the compressed air. How the conventional cascade control works. In a conventional system, the compressors are monitored and controlled by their internal pressure sensors. The sensors are set compressor specifically, so that the compressors start one after the other as the pressure drops. Let's look at the big picture a bit closer. The first graph illustrates the pressure level in a compressor station. The vertical axis shows the pressure level and the horizontal axis shows the air consumption. The second graph shows the pressure loss from the air treatment and the delivery system. The pressure loss increases in proportion to air consumption. At a low consumption, the pressure loss can be, say, just 0.1 bar, while the maximum consumption can increase it up to 1 bar. This is true especially if the filters are contaminated and the piping system is undersized. The last graph shows the pressure level in the consumption point, the actual production. A compressed air system should be designed so that the system pressure maintains the minimum required pressure level in all situations. The green line in our example represents the minimum required pressure level. This diagram illustrates the compressor-specific operation limit values. Compressor 1, for instance, starts compressing air at 7.5 bar and stops at 7.75 bar. When air consumption is less than the capacity of compressor 1, it can compress the necessary air alone. As air consumption increases and its capacity is no longer enough to maintain the pressure, the next compressor starts according to its pressure setting. At maximum consumption, the output of all three compressors is needed. The result is that the pressure level in the compressor room is high at low consumption and drops as air consumption increases. Since the air treatment and the pipework cause further pressure losses, the pressure fluctuation at the consumption point is accentuated. The pressure settings of the compressors should be high enough to secure the minimum pressure level at maximum consumption. The outcome is that an unnecessarily high pressure level practically always exists in the system. Production plants are accustomed to maintaining a high pressure level to avoid problems in production. An unnecessarily high pressure level is a waste of energy. Energy is wasted in two ways. The compressors consume more energy as they need to work against a higher pressure and air consumption increases as the machinery uses more compressed air when the pressure is high. If the required pressure level is, say, 6 bar, and the average system pressure is maintained at 6.5 bar, this extra 0.5 bar increases the energy consumption by 10%. How Salin Balance Works Salin Balance measures the pressure in the compressor station and in at least one point in the compressed air network. This means that the compressors no longer operate according to fixed limit values, but Salin Balance controls them continuously so that an optimum pressure level always prevails in the point of usage. Salin Balance controls the starting and stopping of the compressors. The output of fixed speed compressors is controlled via load unload commands. Inverter and turbo compressors are controlled by changing their internal pressure settings. Salin Balance keeps the output pressure correct in real time and minimizes the blow-off of turbo compressors. Salin Balance was designed with a view to the reliability of compressed air production. It works parallel with a compressor's individual control system. No changes are made in the safety systems of the compressors. In case of fault, the compressors continue operating in accordance with their individual pressure settings. Just the necessary amount of air is compressed, there is no excessive pressure, and the system pressure always remains even. Salin, more than 60 years in compressed air.